Hello, my name is Louise and welcome to Adventures with Yarn. This is my knitting and crochet podcast in which I mainly talk about the things on which I am knitting and crocheting as well as often stitching. Um, if you are a new viewer, welcome so much. Thank you for taking the time to come check out this podcast. And if you are an existing subscriber, welcome back. Um, I really appreciate um, when you guys subscribe. Uh, let's me know that maybe I'm doing Doing something right um, and as always if you like what you see feel free to hit the thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe if you're not already okay well I hope you guys have all had a great week um, I have been doing some knitting some stitching stitch mania stitch mania excuse me stitch mania continues on and I continue to keep on stitching basically i'm still doing um my method of spinning a little wheel of chance on an app to decide what to stitch on if you're unfamiliar with stitch mania um it is a cross stitch phenomena um in which you basically just kind of stitch every day in may and different people have different you know methods of their may madness um but the method of which i'm doing is i gathered together 19 projects that either hadn't been started or had were like in different levels of progression and i chose 19 because it is 2019 and um basically I spin the wheel and that is the project that I work on that day and I don't spend a ton of time but I am spending some time stitching and so in this way I am stitching every day in May which is it's it's cool it's cool I like I think it's kind of revived my cross stitch mojo a little bit because there was definitely patterns that were way on the back burner I was definitely you know preferring to be knitting and crocheting but I do want to eventually have some of these cross stitches finished so um I've been doing that I don't have any I I don't really want to show too much of the stitching because they're all really just starts and they don't look like a whole lot but I'll probably put together like a montage to show like later um in the month or after stitch mania is finished um so I actually am wearing a finished object that I finished a while ago. Um, this is the Kingsman shawl that I found on the Lion Brand website. Um, I'm actually wearing a project of mine which is different and nice and fun and I really enjoy it. I think um, I gift knit like all the time I don't really make a ton of stuff for myself so um, to actually have something that I made for me to wear is pretty cool so um, I made this it's a crocheted shawl that I prefer to wear as kind of like the um, you know triangular handkerchief style scarf so I'm wearing that right now it just gives a little pop of color um and especially when the weather is kind of this in between ish chilly kind of not too cold not warm that kind of thing um yeah so it's been fun this was one ball of yarn that changed colors on its own i think it was the lion brand um shawl in a ball or something like that um but it is sparkly, I'm not sure if you can tell, but that is definitely a lot of fun, and I'm really glad to be wearing that. So this week though, this week, besides doing a little bit of stitching here and there, not here and there, every, every day pretty much, starting out each day with some stitching, I went ahead and finished my Samphire socks. So here they are, the second sock of the Samphire socks. Last week I had a finished sock and I wanted to get the next sock going. And I cannot believe that I was able to finish the second sock in 
a week's time, just a few days less than a week. Um, very much impressed myself on that. I, but definitely, um, I have had a lot more time than normal because I am at home recovering. Uh, you may not be able to tell because I might look and <laughs> I definitely feel fine. I feel fine, but just kind of resting, taking it easy, gaining my strength back and um, not being at work where I could potentially be, you know, straining myself a bit much. So I had the week to finish the sock and I did. Um, I am hugely into sock knitting right now. Um, so basically, yeah, I cast this on since the last podcast and uh, we've got, you know, the ribbed cuff and the leg here with the um, lace pattern and a little bit of broken rib, nice texture back here um, with our little heel flap there and toes. Basically, yeah, I really got the hang of the lace pattern and had a lot of fun continuing that and following the pattern of the lace kind of made things go a bit faster, especially when it came to the foot area. I just busted it out. Um, speaking of busting it out, um, my wooden chowgu needles, they're like bamboo chowgu um, circular, nine inch circulars that I was making these on. I think have started to um, like splinter. They, uh, the tip of one of them kind of a little piece of wood came off and then it started kind of like catching on the yarn. And I definitely didn't want that too much because I didn't want to damage this yarn. Um, and so I kind of like filed down the edge, um, it was a little disconcerting because I think that like it advertised itself as being like it was the strongest bamboo or something like that. Um, so it was really weird and I was really sad because um, with this new sock mojo that I've acquired, I have been using those handy dandy uh, nine inch circulars and really, really enjoying them. So I did file it down after um after I was sure to order um some other needles I filed down the ones that I had so they would last me in the couple days it would take for the new needles to arrive and, and it did it did work so I think I might keep them on it might give me a really good excuse to have two socks on the needles at a time uh, which might be a little ambitious and easy for me to say now while I have all this extra time right now but um before I show you the needles that I got, let's um, go through these socks real quick. So, like I said, these are the Samfire socks by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade, and she has um, put out this sock subscription club called the Handmade Sock Society, and I really encourage you to join. You can find her on Ravelry under Curious Handmade, and um, for a little bit less than 20 American dollars you can join the sock subscription club and so far two patterns have been put out the uh, shell cottage socks and the samphire socks and each pattern is put out every other month so it's kind of like a mystery um, until the pattern is released and then you do the pattern along with everybody else and she's written some very lovely writing content to go along with each of the patterns that kind of ties it all in ties it all in with the theme of itself which is the Cornish coast and it's a very lovely very lovely sock knit along I highly encourage you guys to join it with me the yarn that I use to make the Samphire socks is um, called silky the color is called silky and this is in um, from Biff Sugar Yarns. You can find her on Etsy. I really like her yarn. This is what I call this little <laughs> the luxury sock yarn. It is made of, um, actually, you know, I think I got that wrong last time. I wanted to say this was the luxury sock. It might just be regular sock. I think it's just 
merino nylon, the 7525 merino nylon, rather than the merino cashmere nylon. But um, it's still as soft as ever, probably just a bit more durable. And I, I just, I love it. You can see all those purples. There's actually more than just purple. You know, there's blues and browns and creams and just a really, really lovely yarn. Really, really pretty colors. So since my chow goo needles started breaking, um, but I loved them so much, I did decide to stay with chow goo, but I went ahead and got some nine inch circular needles that are uh, stainless steel. So they definitely won't be splintering. Um, as you can see, they're still in their package. I have not tried them out yet. Um, it says they are ergonomically designed to ease hand fatigue. So, hmm, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. It very well might give me an excuse to have two socks on the needles, which will work out great for me because not only are the next, um, the next socks from the Handmade Sock Society coming out in a couple weeks, but also um, my mac and cheese sock knit along is coming up. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, I have in here my yarn in my project bag from Poodle Knits. And um, I have my mac and cheese colored sock yarn from Madeline Tosh. And I have my blue Nassau uh, yarn to go with it to contrast. I'll make the cuffs, the heels, and the toes with this. And so I'll have this very um, craft mac and cheese looking type of socks. I haven't decided fully on which pattern I'm going to use. But the beauty of this sock knit along is that you can choose your yarn and you can choose whatever pattern you want to work on. So the, basically the point of this sock knit along is to really encourage you guys to make some socks because they're so much fun. And they're such a lovely finished object too. I mean, when you're, you know, feeling kind of cold and I mean, these handmade socks are just so cozy. They can be, they can be pretty or they can be funky, however you want them to be, whatever yarn you choose. Um, and they're just, they're just really, really, it's just a really nice feeling to have and such a sense of accomplishment too, that like you made these socks by hand. Um, so basically you can find out more information on the Ravelry page, Adventures with Yarn. There is a post under announcements that kind of lists things out, lists the rules. Um, on May 25th, this upcoming Saturday, the entry page will open and you can enter in a post to join the sock knit along. And so what you'll do is you'll join the group and, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you will, um, you know, either take pictures of the yarn that you have or you can just write about it too and just write about you know what your plans are go ahead and let me know like what kind of level experience you have is this you know are you joining this sock knit along because you've never made a sock before or because you love making socks or are you stuck with that second sock syndrome which is the problem of making one sock and just not being able to bring yourself to make that second sock um, I am going to welcome those of you that suffer from second sock syndrome to join this knit along. The only issue is, is that you can't have more than one sock already finished. So you can have one finished sock, but you can't have like a sock and a half finished or you can't have cast on the second sock. Um, so, but, but I just highly encourage you to join. Go ahead and join. Um, and stay tuned, watch out on all platforms that is here on YouTube, that is on Ravelry and Instagram, and um, because I have lots of really cool prizes, um, especially from some really cool makers on Etsy to give away, um, so you don't wanna miss out. Basically, um, 
you know, I have my mac and cheese colored socks. That's what I'll be making, but I do want to encourage everybody who might be intimidated by hand knit socks to know that knitting socks can be easy peasy, mac and cheesy. Okay, yeah, so, um, so I'm really excited to cast on, but I'm not going to cast on until May 25th. So, I put those back in my project bag for now. Um, I definitely want to put a shout out to Amanda, who is Yarnanigans on Instagram. She has decided to um, very, very kindly do a little yarn giveaway before the actual start of this knit along. So go check her out on Instagram. Um, enter in to win her giveaway because she hand dyed some yarn that for one is beautiful and for two is in the colorway of um, like some nice cheesy goodness and so you very well could also be making some uh, macaroni and cheese colored socks in the sock knit along if you win from uh, her giveaway and I do think that she actually is starting um, to hand dye her yarn as well. So um, check out her Instagram um, and be sure to see what she has going on. Okay, so I last week told you about how I have broken my yarn diet. Yeah, but I am going to try to contain myself. Um, I do have a skein of yarn here. Now this skein of yarn, when I I found this and I put it on the back burner until I knew I was, you know, in the clear to be buying more yarn. But, um, and as many of you already know, I am obsessed with pink. So, I'm just gonna show you this. Look at this. Look at this yarn. Oh my gosh, so this is from Knitwise Fibers. I found them on Etsy and they, you know, hand dye yarn. This is on uh, Sweet Sock Base, which is 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon, so it is that nice sturdy sock. Um, and the color, the colorway is called Ur Mer Gerd Speckles. So it's like written out to make you kind of sound like Ur Mer Gerd. I guess it's kind of Ur Mer Gerd Speckles. <laughs> Forgive me, please. I mean, I don't just, I, don't, I think that's how you say the colorway, and that's kind of what my heart was saying oh my god um <laughs> when i saw this color um yeah i like can't hardly help myself uh with these bright pinks look at these just these bright luscious pinks and light and dark and some you know mermaidish bluish greenish in there I was just wow you know how like um Look at this side too. You know how like people are always afraid of like becoming their parents? This kind of thing makes me wonder if I'm starting to become like my mom. Um, my mom is into uh, quilting and she uses um, a lot of batik fabric and some of those are really out there. And sometimes, um, it can be really bright, really out there. And, um, and you know, I, I like to think that I have good taste, but I do find myself drawn to these, just these bright, wild colors. And so, who knows, who knows. But, you know, the great thing too is that I'm gonna be making some socks out of these and socks for myself. I'm gonna be making some socks out of these and so, I mean, you can't go too crazy with socks. Um, so I do love that about this. Um, something sad to report was while I was on this yarn diet and also probably while I was supporting indie dyers online, um, my local yarn shop went out of business. 
How sad. Isn't that sad? I um, don't always go to that side of town, but whenever I do, I always make sure to, you know, like, be sure to look and peer in. And they have kind of odd hours or had kind of odd hours. They had kind of odd hours and... So I would kind of always be like, oh, you know, are they open? See what's going on. Can you, can I like see people through the window sitting in there knitting and stuff? And then we passed by and I noticed that it was empty and they closed. And that was the only one here in town besides like a big chain like Joanne Fabrics or Michaels and Hobby Lobby and so that is pretty sad and I'm kind of not sure unsure like how how to think about you know like um for one me being on a yarn diet you know that's not helping a local yarn shop um you know should it should I feel bad that I'm not supporting um, you know, my own local yarn shop, local businesses, or should I, you know, still lean towards supporting independent dyers online? Um, let me know what you think in the comments. But anyways, um, it didn't sound, it didn't necessarily sound like they went bankrupt. They kind of put it out there to be more so that the owner retired, but you know, I'm sure Oh, I'm sure the rest of the city will, uh, the rest of the knitters in this city will be feeling how I'm feeling about it. Very sad to see them go. Anyways, knit wise, fiber is where I got this from on Etsy. So I spent most of the week knitting the other Samphire socks so that I would have my needles free to start knitting macaroni and cheese socks later this week but I did do a little bit more knitting and I'll show you one second here. Um, like I said, the majority of this week was spent on the Samphire socks, but I did get a little, just not a lot, but a little bit more prod, uh, progress on my test knit for um, Amanda from Birch and Lily on the Sweet Dahlia shawl. So, if you can see, I have just a little bit more progress on the lace section of this. You can pull this up here. So, there's the bottom of the shawl. We got the striped sections of garter stitch and then the lace. I'm trying to hold that this distance so it doesn't get like whited out. And you can see this really pretty yarn. So, again, this is Biff Sugar yarn. Again, you can find them uh, on Etsy. We have this pink, which is Paper Roses. We'll show you that here. I don't know how well this will. So these are, um, both of the yarns that I used are single ply yarns. And this is called Nebula. You kind of see the browns and blue and purple of that Nebula and Paper Roses. I've this has been really really pretty to work with and actually birch and lily ended up kind of reposting my instagram post of my progress of the sweet dahlia shawl on her instagram story which was really really cool to see um this is going to be so pretty when it's finished i um am trying to pace myself um, at a kind of a fast pace while I'm here at home, which I need to catch up on so that I can be sure to be finished with this in time. Uh, but this will be so pretty. I can't wait to uh, get to wear it. Very, very pretty triangular shawl um, that um, I believe will be available for sale come June. A little, maybe probably a little bit after June 7th. So that is my progress so far on the Sweet Dahlia shawl. Okay, well, I think that that is it for what I have this week. Um, 
Don't forget, if you like what you see, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to watch out for the Mac and Cheese Sock Knit Along. That is going to start this Saturday, May 25th. Um, stay tuned on Instagram um, this next weekend for the start and the kickoff of that. I, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to starting. I'm really looking forward to you guys joining me and knitting some socks. All right, so, um, okay, you guys take care. I wish you well and have fun with the crafting and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.